Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson in my piano course for beginners level two. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you like what you see, give this video a thumbs up. If you're interested in getting the accompanying method book for this course, there's going to be links for that below. And I also offer online piano lessons. If you're looking for one, there's going to be information below. In this lesson, we're going to learn a performance piece, a really well-known tune called Minuet in G Major. Everybody has heard this piece at one point or another. We commonly refer to it as a Bach piece, but we now know that it was actually written by Petzold and became part of Bach's famous keyboard collection, the Anna Magdalena book. This piece is quite challenging since the hands almost work completely independently, so lots of separate hand practice is going to really help. The slurs and staccatos that you see in the score are not part of the original manuscript, but traditionally we play them with this or something very similar, but you are welcome to add your own articulation if you feel that completely legato would sound better. Let me demonstrate it first and then I'll talk you through it. As you could hear, I took a little bit of uh, liberty with the articulation as well, just to form it to my own taste. But as I said, use this as a framework, as a guidance, and then you can add your own articulation as you wish it. Looking at the, the piece, we see the right hand has the tune almost all the way through. The left hand plays in a little bit into it, but the left hand is mainly supporting the melody with notes all the way through, not chords. We have one chord at the very start, but then it's it's a it's a melody of its own. If we play the left hand on its own, the, the notes are quite long, so we can't always hear the melody, but this is basically a, a very kind of um, early introduction into counterpoint, which means that the two hands play independent melodies from each other. So let's start with the left hand. We start in the G position, and the, the time signature is three, four, so three beats in every bar. One, two, three, 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 one, two. Three. So, so far it's been stepwise all the way through, so quite easy to follow. And then we have this broken chord. One, two, three, one. Jump down to the octave. Two and three and one. So here we've got again D, B, G, D, jump, and two under C, and those are quavers. So one and two and three and one and two and three and one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two and three and one, two, number two on the F sharp, three, one, two, three on the B, one, octave and G, so the last phrase is a bit tricky. Let's go again from one on the G, the, the last three bars. One, two, three, one, two, octave, three, and G, one, and octave. So quite a jumpy left hand, but that's very, very common in Baroque music, especially in Bach's music. So whatever pieces you play composed by him, you'll find this moving bass line quite often. Right hand. Now in the right hand, I added these slurs, which kind of create shorter phrases, but you can, you can join certain slurs together if you want to. I'm going to show it to you with the actual notation that you see on the screen now. So starting in the G position, G, B, D, five on the D, one and two and three and one, two, three. So I'm going to connect the D to the G and bounce up. And again, just like in the previous lesson, if you decide, you can switch the finger numbers on the repeated Gs, or you can play it with the thumb both times. So, crotchet, quaver, quaver, crotchet, ta, ti, 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 ta, ta, ta. One, 
two and three and one, two, three. One, two and three and one, two, three. So jumping up three to the E. One, two, three, F sharp, G and octave. Four on the C. It's a sequence here. B, F sharp, number two and back to one. And that's the end of the first section. Then we go on back to five on the D. One, two, bounce, three on the, on the E. F sharp, G, octave. Four on the C. B, A, F sharp, G. So crossing over, one, two, one in the end. So if you think about these kind of anchor notes, C, B, A, and the rest is kind of embellishing that C. So you can break it down into three phrases like this, or you can do the whole thing in one big slur. It's completely up to you. When you put it hands together, it's going to be quite hard because the left hand is moving at a different pace and the direction is not always the same. When you first try hands together, just ignore the articulation, try to get the notes and rhythms right and the finger numbers, and once you got that right, try to add in the articulation, either detached notes in the left hand, legato in the right hand, or you can play the left hand legato as well. So one, two, and three, and one. Hold the left hand. One, two, and three, and move down. One, two, and three, and one. And now going together. The big jump. And we arrive back to the B and D. And now left hand is moving in quavers. Number two on the F sharp, three on the B, now this piece is similar to Furelis and many of the other ones that we remember from ringtones and ads and these are the kind of very early classical pieces that everybody has heard at one point or another and for that reason many people don't like them but many people feel very enthusiastic to learn them because you know it's something that they recognize. However you feel I would urge you to to learn this piece it's very good for coordination working in the key of G major and if you manage to add in some articulation it's an even better exercise.